Hey everyone, Sam Mackay from Enterprise TNA. I really want to explore the top end function today, and I think that you will really enjoy seeing the immense amount of ways that you can utilize this sort of function. It's such a powerful function, and there's so many little nuances to how it operates in different contexts. And I want to I want to just go through some examples because it's, total, it's, it's without doubt the best way to understand how it all works. I'm going to walk through some examples, and you'll see how I've applied it to the these very unique uh, calculations or um, the, the insights that I want to sh that I want to discover and I want to showcase. And you'll be able to see the flexibility around how you actually how you actually utilize it. Okay, so what we've got here, I've got a bit of a setup. I'm trying to analyze our sales people. So we've got a sales team, right? They work around a number of different regions. They could work in a number of different stores. Okay, and so what we can do is we can we can change the um, time frame that we analyze our customers on. So I better just actually find where this data sits. Yeah, so we can change when this data actually. Um, what what this, uh, this report is actually representing in terms of time and then run some analysis on that. Now, he, here's, a, here's a unique insight that I wanted to discover, okay? So what I wanted to work out was, so say, a say we've got our sales people here, right? This, this chart here is just representing these two columns here. So 538 is in this particular time context is the amount that this Martin car has sold. So that's how much revenue they've generated from their sales over that time period. So that looks like it's about a year and a half or so. What I wanted to do, this is quite unique, I wanted to compare the sales, I wanted to run a comparison, I wanted to compare the sales versus the top five sales average, okay? So yes, it, this, this is quite a unique insight, but this is a, a perfect insight for using top end because what top end enables us to do is manipulate a virtual table uh, based on ranking and then run a calculation based on that virtual table. So think about what we're trying to do in this particular instance. We're trying to compare these sales, so that's all done for us, total sales is calculating per salesperson, but we wanted to compare this amount to the average of our top five. So sometimes you, 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 you know, ordinarily you, you might, well, sometimes you might want to compare, okay, what, what as a percent is, is, is this um, person selling versus our top, say, salesperson, right? Well, just to change things up a bit, I, th I thought, okay, well, let's go and work out the average of our top five, and then we'll then uh, compare our sales versus that particular number, okay? And this top top end is just perfect for um, you know, within a particular context, going and finding a virtual table and then producing that calculation based on that virtual table, okay? So let's have a look at this calculation. We're going to extend it as well. So you can use, and you're going to see in a second, you can use top end a couple of ways, okay? In this particular case, I am placing the top end Tape, virtual table inside of an iterating function. So within each individual result, right, I want to create a, and shape a virtual table that I want to iterate through. Okay? And then I want to produce a result based on that. So what I'm doing at every single row in this particular table is I want to find the top five sales people based on total sales, okay? Now the interesting thing here is that within a particular context, and this is where, this is, you know how I said at the start, there's a, there's a number of nuances. Well, this is, this, is, this is, these are all the nuances that you have to think about, okay? So if we want to analyze top five customers within our, sorry, salespeople, within our salespeople context, we need to, within top end, utilize the all function to remove any context from salesperson name. So basically, say, say for instance, this particular row here, we are creating, we are expanding a virtual table of all of our salespeople, right? Then we are running a ranking and then only leaving the top five, okay? Because we're using descending here 
and total sales. So basically, at every single row here, we are iterating not through every single salesperson, which is what all would do. We are iterating through uh, the uh, every single we iterate top end is iterating through every single salesperson, but we are only returning the top five. So this particular iteration is only iterating over five salespeople at every single row. The top five salespeople. Um, which is going to be, in the theoretically, these five here. And then it's working out the total sales for those five top salespeople, these five salespeople here, and then returning an average of total sales across those five. So seriously interesting, right? Seriously interesting. And think about how you can manipulate this quite a bit. Or you, if, say you wanted to do top 10, all you'd need to do is change that to 10, and then you'd be getting the average of the top 10. Say, for instance, you want to do it for the top top two, you can change that there, and then that would adjust the amount. So you see here 526, right? That's basically in between 538 and 514. But in this particular case, we're going to go and do the top five. Okay? It's a really interesting insight. Now, how do we extend this? We want to compare sales to our top five. I want to see it as a percentage, right? And so this is where we can very quickly actually utilize, um, say, variables like so, and I can go uh, top five average. So I can just whip it up pretty quickly. Then I'm just gonna go return down here. Oh, my bad. And I'm gonna go divide the uh, total sales. So that's our existing calculation by the top five average. And I'm going to grab our variable there and then use zero as the alternative result and then go enter. So check this out and then I'm just going to turn this to a percentage and then then we have here our percent uh, versus total sales. So really interesting insight, right? And so unique, so unique. Probably want to get rid of that. The, the, I mean the total is pretty meaningless there but say for instance you're putting this inside a visualization you know, we could do that pretty quickly here. And so you could see a makeup of total sales versus our top five average, okay? So there's a lot of versatility here, and this is just you know, an example of a unique insight using top end um, that I thought would be a good one to go through in terms of just trying to understand all the nuances or what is actually happening within top end. Okay, so here's another example. I'll run through this a little bit quicker, but it is, again, a relatively nuanced way to use top end. So in this particular case, okay, within our salespeople, I want to see, I want to work out well, what is the percent of these particular sales, right? These particular sales of all of our customers, what is the percent of the top five products that they sell, okay? So based on all the sales they're making, let's break out the top five products they sell and what is the percentage of that? So that is, a, that is actually a very interesting insight because you, 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 you would be able to identify if a customer, if a salesperson is really focusing on a particular set of clients, if they're favoring a, a particular set of products, sorry, versus other customers who might be too widespread. And so this could you know, really introduce some great conversations if, if you wanted to um, really nail in, you know, nail down into how people are actually selling your products. So let's have a look at this one though. This is gonna, I've set this up slightly differently to show you again a new way that you, another way that you can utilize top end. Now in the previous example, I used an iterating function, but what you can do is you can actually use it as additional context in the calculate function as well. So pretty tricky, right? And they actually work in a similar way. I mean, they're basically doing the same thing. They're creating a virtual table as a new context, right? And so this virtual table is uh, for every single sales person, so if we look down here, it's evaluating over every single product that they have sold, working out what the total sales of that product was, and then only returning the top five because I'm I'm using a descending, uh, I'm using descending here, and I've placed in five here. Okay. Now the interesting thing here that I want you to take away is that you do not need to use an all function or anything like that because you have to remember what is the current context of the calculation. The current context is salesperson, so there's no impact on products. 
if you just place products in there it's going to evaluate over every single product because there is no product filter or product context on your report page currently so this virtual table is created at every single row in this particular table and then the sales of the top five products are returned so then if we wanted to derive so let's just check this out let's derive um, top five product sales so what we want to do is we then want to work out okay well what is the percentage of this okay and then we can compare we can compare all our sales people and so then it's very simple from here so basically what I want to do is I want to go divide top five product sales by two sales and I'll use zero as the alternative result and then so you'll see here that this will adjust and then I just need to update this to a percentage and check this out so now we have the percentages and then we can say sort our um, we can sort our table now based on those percentages and this is a really really cool insight and we can see well why is there why why is there a huge divergence potentially between some salespeople and other salespeople is it regional is it manager focus i mean there's just like lots of great things that you can you know you can derive from that and obviously you can put this inside and again a visualization it also is 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 totally dynamic as well right so say for instance you want to drill into a specific time frame well, you can very easily just by changing the date uh, context in your report. And then you can also, if you wanted to, you could create, again, a visualization pretty quickly and, and truly see, well, okay, well, where is this divergence occurring? Why are these customers down here, um, you know, have a much lower percentage than the others? Okay, so this has gone on a little bit longer than, than I thought, but, but a pretty interesting, very interesting examples of top end right and there's just like so many different ways that you can manipulate top end to then find out these really unique and interesting insights that involve some sort of ranking um, and also you can evaluate how these things change through time as well there's nothing stopping you from incorporating time intelligence calculations or time comparison calculations on top of these new calculations you've derived you've, you've created with top end and that's where measure branching comes in where you can really extend things quite far Okay, I think that's uh, that's enough for now, and uh, hopefully a good example um, on on top end and some uses there. If you enjoyed learning about it and want to throw the video a like, really appreciate it, and don't forget to subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV. Plenty of um, great content coming out, some live content. So I really want uh, you to to get a hold of that and and, and attend if you can. Okay, all the best.